God, how do you follow up an episode like, like that? Totally unaware that the Demon King had been awoken. That feeling when you return to your, your childhood home years later, or in this case, three hours later, and it just looks different. It looks smaller than you remembered. Yeah, you know who's sweating right now. To have your whole plan contingent on someone not remembering something is maybe not the most stable position to be in. It's not the best Gunji move. At this point, I suspect, and I think also the most narratively satisfying thing, is for the king to destroy you. Oof. Not that he would even be sad about that as he died. He would probably love it. What an honor. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think the king will remember and then go into something like a panic mode where he's like, where is my Kamugi and why is she not with me right now? I mentioned last episode, but it's so cool and so strange how Gon started with having so much and the result of this arc now is that in his mind, he has nothing to lose so much so that he's literally throwing away his life and the <laughs> king, you know, born of insects, has everything to lose or at least has like this really precious thing in this odd friendship. It just this is totally not what you'd expect. Flash X and X start. I wonder if we'll even get going this episode. You're in big trouble. Oh no. Oh no, he's getting there. Uh oh. Oh man, if I'm- Oof. Oh, the stress. Sorry, did I say Yubi? God, I meant Poof. Have I been saying Yubi this whole episode? If I did make a mistake, I'm gonna go back and dumb my voice in to say Poof instead of Yubi. Oh, you too, Yuppie? You too. I don't know if I'm Yuppie in this situation, I'm keeping my hands clean. Why though? Now you're both sweating. I just, I'm getting that feeling I get sometimes when you speak to me, Poofy, that you're gaslighting me. Kept them waiting long enough. Oh, they gotta be so confused right now. I'll chill here. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do that, though. You haven't really heard about Peter yet. Ah yes, my favorite one. What else are you not remembering? Or game girl. Like, this is not gonna go well. This is a losing battle. Next time Poof calls someone an imbecile, that memory will pop right up. I really don't like this. I don't like this feeling. I don't like the feeling of like, uh oh, if somebody thinks about this, I'll be figured out or whatever. I hate having to maintain a lie. It's so much work and feels so terrible, especially if for whatever reason you're deceiving someone you, you care about, you just feel terrible and you're like constantly reminded of your terribleness because there's always a lurking danger that can't be eliminated, which actually in a sense only gets more severe over time because the longer it takes to get discovered, the worse the fallout is. It's so much better. It feels so good. Like you can't put a price or value on the feeling of just being so clean that you don't, there's nothing that could be discovered. You know, in my opinion, that's worth so much more. It's so much better than anything you might hope to gain through deception. There is one sort of gray area thing that pops to mind, which interestingly the show is covered. It's like, do you tell people painful truths? Like maybe you didn't do anything bad, but you found out something that would affect someone you care about. Do you tell them or not? I can't answer universally for other people, but my feeling is that it's always a yes. And for me myself, it's definitely always a yes. It's a little bit condescending now to think that you know the full range of how they're able to handle things, that they are these fragile creatures in your custody, emotionally. This is a very fragile situation. Good luck with that. You won't have any problems keeping Pito quiet. I'm getting that feeling I get sometimes when you talk that... She did a lot for you. She was the one who really, who probably loved you the most, judging by the actions of these two. しかし、我々もそばにおりませんし。Well, 
Yeah, don't, don't. You have not learned your lesson. Don't question me. I'm the king. I'm the ant king. Poof's <laughs> life flashed before his eyes. For a second, we almost didn't need to do the human harvesting. Everyone felt that. It's so interesting sometimes, the timing of things I'm watching and what overlaps. I mean, it's especially bad with Hunter x Hunter because apparently I've come to understand everything is basically Hunter x Hunter or was influenced by it in some way. But there's a very easy link to make between this and Invincible with Omni-Man, you know, the ultimate beings. And it's like, yeah, in a certain sense, he is the ultimate being. Body and power of a god, IQ off the charts. But at the same time, it's sort of like, so what? I don't know. The whole might is right thing. If I have the power to do something that makes it just to do something. This dichotomy you often hear, there are wolves and there are sheep and you're one or the other. It's a system to give it some credit. It's not nothing. The show, I think, already gave a very nice answer to that, which was the, the Gungeon games between Mugi and the King. There's something deeper that you can't win ever by brute forcing. What's also interesting to think about as it applies to real life is that only the King can know that. Only the King with ultimate power can know the limitations of his ultimate power. People like Poof will be stuck thinking that forever. The parallel to that in real life, I think, is the things people quest for all their lives only to realize that they're the same just with those things. And only people who have achieved those things know that. And they try to tell people who haven't achieved those things. It's not all it's cracked up to be. And then people who have not achieved those things or do not have those things are like, yeah, 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 you know, world's smallest violin, etc. Be careful not crying all over your, your money and <laughs> beautiful girlfriends and mansion, etc. Wouldn't want all your cash to get wet. And for sure, I definitely know there's some things people told me that I could not have known without sufficient experience, especially because there's different levels of knowing. I mean, I'm constantly rediscovering old ideas watching shows. It's like, oh, that's what that means. You know, you get like a new expanded level of depth to the idea. So it's almost like, I mean, I think it's not necessary, but it seems like for most people, the best course of action is just get everything really fast, really quickly, and then not get stuck on it. Alternatively, for, for like the best of us, you just try to cut straight there, but it's hard. Yeah, that tracks. At least it didn't flee. Or, you know, do what Palm almost did. No. That's not what... Well, that is what Moral would have wanted, but it doesn't honor his legacy. It's not about might or power. It's gripped by fear. I mean, obviously. But I hope he overcomes it. It's not satisfying. Oh, the king could, like, destroy everything in a 50 meter radius with a breath, probably. He doesn't need to see you. Also true. Okay, I think it's not wrong. The question goes back to the Kalua thing. What is running away here? Is the body retreating or is the spirit retreating? And it could be both simultaneously. But in terms of what feels satisfying as a viewer and also one of the lessons that comes out of this arc, if it's just a fear, you have lost. You have allowed something to control your faculties. You have given up some leverage in this Gunji game. To the extent to which you're thinking clearly and you have so much mastery that you know you could fight. Even knowing you die, you have the ability to put yourself in the fight. You've gotten yourself to that point. And yet you think this is the most strategic decision. At that point, there's nothing wrong with what he's saying. The only thing that's missing is you retreat now and then what's next? The body retreats, the spirit does not. I mean, just thinking about moral. I don't think moral would be opposed to fleeing, but fleeing would work in his favor. You know, it would be something that gives him more options and more control. Moral has a way of making every step, even a step backwards, create optionality, moving his pieces in the way that give the most future power to his other pieces. In real life, it's really difficult because in an emotional state, your emotions will co-opt your logical faculties. In fact, I've seen some evidence to suggest that the logical part of your brain is intrinsically linked with the emotional part of your brain, that there's no separation. Because on some level, making choices involves having a value, and having a value is an offshoot of emotion. It's just sort of a ripple of desire. People will tell you they're thinking logically, not emotionally. Rarely the case, if ever. That's one of the big traps of being in love with your thoughts or thinking you're leading from logic. All it takes is a skewed desire tree and all of your logic is working in favor of that thing that's off to begin with. Anyway, back to Knuckle to rank things from worst to best. Starting with the worst, Knuckle emotionally runs in to fight the king without thinking it gets destroyed. Next worst, Knuckle flees and lives and never fights again, giving up like now. Next, Knuckle overcomes his fear, thinks clearly, comes up with a plan and dies. Because at least there's something so powerful and incredible about that as a character. And then best of all, inconceivable to him right now, is Knuckle comes up with a plan and wins, you know? And winning doesn't have to be defeating the king. Winning could be contributing in a meaningful way. Though nothing he's saying is wrong. <laughs> the timing. Malirion's a real one though, he's ready to go. Okay, there it is. But even that's not satisfying, it's like, we'll flee and then they'll do it? I don't like it. 
Interesting. I did not expect Valyrian to be the one. Add that to the growing list of things I didn't see coming. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I get a very sympathetic feeling hearing Knuckle where you are going full force explaining to someone why you can't do something. Everything you're saying makes sense, but on the inside, if you're really looking, you're hating yourself for what you're saying. The real answer is just to do it. Knuckle at least gets sympathy for this being a life or death situation. It, like in real life, it's not, right? And you will tell someone angrily why you can't do this, why this is going to fail, why that doesn't work out. I did that already. I tried it. It doesn't work. I know it's not going to work. And your arguments are very convincing to everyone except you and the reason you're getting angry is because you know that and you hate yourself for it that is such a deeply unsatisfying feeling like you're watching yourself fail yourself speaking of feeling unclean listening to yourself making excuses for things you know you have to do goes in that same category to me of things that are terrible <laughs> just showing off at this point. What a show off. Oh, there's no time to flee. That decision was made for you. No, not like this. Not like this. Oh, no, no. Why, why, why? That was just a knockout blow, right? I mean, I know he's the king and super powerful. They didn't even see him leave. We gotta destroy these ants. Oh. Oh. oh god. Oh thank god. There's still a chance. There's still hope. Oh my god. Enjoy your last minutes on earth. Use the most powerful magic of all. Manipulation and lies. <laughs> Truly they have become humans. Get that feeling again, poof. But I get sometimes when you talk to me. You, you dare? You said the word contest. You almost said the word game. That would have been over for you. So many words you gotta avoid. So many nouns. Contest, game, match. Imbecile. Next time he sees a runny nose. That was a brutal cutaway. A new character has emerged in the show. Peter's corpse. I don't need to. This is so beneath me. Is it? <laughs> is it really? That gamble paid off. Also, the king for all his talents. Not a really good people reader. Loser dies. Oh, he, okay. Give him some credit. He does feel it. They are so lucky right now. I mean, if I'm Miriam, I'm just like, no, there's no game. I don't need to make a deal with you. You just tell me now. I don't need to add arbitrary steps to get what I want if I'm this. I'm the ultimate being here, not you. I get what I want. You get nothing. You get no concessions. Isn't that the whole point? Like, if you're going to ultimate being, ultimate being. Yeah, shut your mouth. Getting that feeling I get sometimes when you speak. So relief to me. I'm especially disappointed in you, Yubi. I expect this from Poof. This is change for the king. Because before he was very absolute about his his law and rules. He's getting soft. <laughs> he has the leverage. I mean, even if he does win. The king could just decide, tell me now. Get a weird pang of pain every time they mention Pito. Every time, just stab in the heart. It's like every sentence. <laughs> How many times can we say Peter in a row? She survived it this time. No, they're not dead. They're, they're... Yes, yes, believe. Yes. Let's keep telling ourselves that. Oh, his hair didn't revert. Interesting. A lot happened while you weren't watching. You missed the... How did you miss that? Imagine tuning into that if you're Pom. Can't we use any of Nav's things? 
ナックルとメレオロンを抱えて。That hurt me. 早くもっと遠くへ逃げなければ。Uh, running doesn't even do it. ここしかない。Uh -huh, interesting. 部屋ではあの縁を使われたら絶対逃げ切れない。There's no good option here. What happened to Nav's portals? Oh, thank God. I love you. Wow, the last stand coming down to Pomin and Calgo is so crazy. Gon's got a big hurt coming. Still, Gon's got a big hurt continuing. And so the final stand begins with Palm, you know, that crazy girl who was stalking Gon at one point. And the Kalgo, the octopus, was the last to join, I think. And then Gon, who's in great shape. And Kalua, who's got a lot on his shoulders. That's it. Also, I don't know what to expect. It's a little bit deflating from a tactical perspective to see Gon unconscious because it was mentioned that his powers. May have rivaled the king, or he could touch the king, but now he's sleeping, so it's somewhat hard to imagine him waking up and being able to willingly go back into that mode. Although maybe he can, maybe having experienced it once, it's something he can automatically go back to. Not that that doesn't create problems in itself. Thanks a lot, Netero. I understand you very well, Pom. Just like Kite. <laughs> I am sure of it. Damn, look at Kago. Kago, just the man. The king must not know about this whole Pizef arrangement, right? I feel like he wouldn't tolerate it. This is a matter of time. Wow. This show captures something true to life that I, I don't see as well done in anything else, which is just sort of the unexpectedness of life. So much of your waking life is spent thinking about the future and planning. Yet often, maybe most often, the things that have the most radical effects are just random things that enter your life one day. You meet someone one day that introduces you to something or someone that leads you to another country and <laughs> place and whatever. Like all the king was doing was playing board games and Kamuki just destroyed everything, just changed everything, the whole arrangement. It's the whole strategy of this fight, the dynamic between the royal guards and the king. This, like, snot-nosed, bumbling girl who can't even protect herself from birds. The most important thing right now about this episode, I feel like they really did my boy Knuckle dirty. I still love him, don't get me wrong. But it's just, you know, I mentioned, I ranked the things of worst to best, and literally almost the worst thing happened, or potentially happened, where he lost both spiritually and physically. Not that I'm blaming him, or not saying I could do any better. Like, I would never even show up for this in the first place. I would never even be invited. <laughs> I mean, if I was in the vicinity, I would be in the crowd of people awaiting great Put. But it was an interesting line, the difference between motivations. I think it was revenge and duty that was represented physically as, as Knuckle walked away. Going back to what I was saying about, we think of ourselves as logical creatures, and we are. We do have this really beautiful, higher functioning power of thought and abstraction. But then there's sort of this question of like, what is it serving? What is it anchored to? And it's probably anchored to something that's been chosen as a direction or orientation. And that thing is kind of intrinsically linked to desire, which is an offshoot or just directly is an emotion. So not hard to imagine how even the most logical people are sort of at the whim of whatever their orientation is. Like, what do you want? What is your highest priority? And we've seen in shocking fashion what that looks like when there's a total collapse, when it eats itself, when everything is centered around something that just does not work. It's not going to work. You can't do it. It's counter nature. It's counter reality. That's Gon, basically. This is maybe a stretch, but I think if you go all the way down Gon's philosophy, it's something like, I'm going to strong arm the universe because, funnily enough, might is right, but like in a much broader sense than just physical power. Like, my ability to actualize the things I want is what makes me important and valuable and special and lovable and makes me worthy of my father who abandoned me. There are just some things that cannot be attained through brute force. To the question of what's anchoring them, a while back I joked about how maybe the <laughs> the answer to this whole thing is love. This is all a treatise on love or something like that. Well, it seems like the characters that are left standing and actually have something to do and feel strong are anchored to something like actual pure love. It's Kalua. It's... Palm, in her way. It's Ikago, who received that fire from Kalua. Interestingly, a spark that Gon lit, and to a certain extent, the king in his love for Kamugi. <laughs>